freezer space, it's a problem. So here's my unpopular opinion of the day. Freezing is an inefficient way to preserve food. It costs money to run, it's dependent on the power grid, and space is always an issue. Now, for the standard American, it may not be a big issue, but for people like you and me who are growing food in bulk, it becomes a big problem. And so while I definitely still use a freezer, of course, I'm always trying to figure out other ways to preserve food that are going to be more cost effective and save space. So dehydrating is one method, and you probably remember my video about dehydrating vegetable powders, which really condenses them down. Another favorite method, of course, is canning. So usually when we think of home canning, it's green beans, pickles, jams, or jellies, but I'm gonna invite you to take it to the next level today as I can some beef. My stash is getting a little bit low, and home canned beef is one of my favorite homemade convenience foods that makes for a quick supper and it clears out room in your freezer. So let's go do it. Now this isn't complicated, but there is one kicker. You gotta have a pressure canner. So meat is a low acid food, and anytime we're preserving low acid foods, you gotta use a pressure canner so you don't risk botulism. And I know people get all wound up about this and they talk about their great Aunt Martha canning during the Great Depression and not using a pressure canner. Cool, if you wanna risk it, that's on you, but for me, I'm always gonna use a pressure canner for meats broths or any other low acid food. But other than a pressure canner, your list of supplies for this project are super easy. You're gonna need some beef, of course. I'm gonna use rump roast for this recipe. I have cut it into chunks. Now you can use any type of roast, but I prefer this one because it's leaner, which means there's less fat to contend with and less to trim off. You're also gonna need some sea salt. Um, don't have to use this, but it just makes for better flavor. Of course, you're gonna need some jars, regular mouth, wide mouth, totally up to you and some lids and rings. So as many of you know, there has been a lot of canning lid drama over the last few years, shortages, the whole nine yards. A couple years ago, I did a video about these reusable lids and it happened to go viral. And I used these and they were a wonderful option during 2020 when you couldn't get any other lids. Now, I recently heard from the company and they said they've been having some supply chain issues, but they can no longer source these reusable gaskets. So now the gaskets they send out are disposable. So I've been looking around for some different options and I came across a company back in October. They seemed really good, but I wanted to test them out and make sure that they held up to their claims and they did. So the lids I've been using lately are four jars lids. This is a small family owned company. I've met the owners personally. They're amazing people. And these are really good lids, you guys. Like they are durable, they are thick, they seal beautifully. And so the prices are good, you can get them in bulk. It just checks all the boxes for me. So I'm gonna drop a coupon code for them down in the show notes. You can check them out. Okay, so once you have a beef cut into chunks, we're going to brown it here in a skillet. Now, this isn't to cook it entirely. The pressure canner is gonna do that part. Make sure my burner's on there. Uh, the purpose of this is just to give it a nice brown crust. It'll look better in the jars and add a little extra flavor. So I'm popping some fat into my frying pan. I'm using bacon grease, use whatever you want. And then we'll brown these ch beef chunks in batches. And while my fat is heating up in my skillet, I'm going to also start a pot with, I don't know, about a gallon or a little bit more of water. I'm gonna get that boiling. Um, just takes a while and it's annoying to have to wait for that. So get that started now. give you a glimpse of what a working kitchen looks like. This is definitely not a studio. We have clean dishes, we have dirty dishes, we have sourdough starter, we have all our canning paraphernalia, we have feta cheese, we have whey, and we have roast for dinner. Real life, baby. together. I have my jars nice and hot. We're just gonna fill these full. You can totally do this in pint jars if you want, but because I have a family of five, the quarts make more sense for me. All right, jars are full. Just for reference, that was four, three to four pound rump roast, and they filled seven jars. And that's really gonna depend on what your roast look like, lots of factors, but just so you know, kind of a ballpark. Now I'm gonna add a teaspoon of salt to my quart jars. If you're using pints, add a half teaspoon. 
This is just for flavor purposes only, so you could technically leave this out, but I don't know, why would you want to leave out the salt? Okay, so now we have our boiling water. Been waiting for us. And we're gonna put that into our jars and leave one inch of headspace at the top. Okay, I'm gonna remove the air bubbles. Now, you probably shouldn't use a, a metal knife. I'm gonna do it today. You just wanna be really careful that you're not whacking the glass and causing any breaks. So I'm just releasing any trapped air that maybe got underneath the beef chunks. This will help with your liquid levels staying where they need to be after the jars come out of the canner. Okay, I'm also just gonna check my headspace. I don't know if you can see, this one is too low in the liquid level, this one's too high totally normal it happens so I'm just gonna use a spoon and pull a few tablespoons out my rule of thumb if I'm looking for an inch headspace I'm gonna go right to the bottom of this lip on both regular mouth and wide mouth jars I'm gonna wipe the rims to get any residue off to make sure that our lids seal properly okay so I have my lids in a pot of hot water here I'm not boiling them or anything I'm just getting them warm to prep the sealing compound on the edges of the lid and now we're gonna pop these on the clean rim. So gonna do my rings now, finger tight only, so I get them threaded appropriately. And then I'm only tightening down until the jar moves on the towel like that. That is good enough. Any more, we're gonna have some issues with sealing. So right there, finger tight. Do it again. Finger tight. Okay, so while I've been doing all the beef stuff, I've had my pressure canner sitting over here with two to three inches of water in the bottom um, on low heat just to kind of get it prepped. I don't want it blazing hot because that could potentially break my jars, but I just want it a little bit warm to start. Okay, so now what happens next kind of depends on the type of canner you have and your manufacturer's instructions. This is an All-American, so I'll show you what I do with my type of canner. So first things first, I'm putting my lid on and I get it lined up. And then it's really important with these type of canners that you tighten the lid evenly. We don't want it to be crooked. And so I um, do opposite wing nuts and get it where it needs to be and even all the way around. And then I can start tightening them down in an opposite pattern. So those two now, these two, now those two. All right, everything's in, we're secure, we're tight. Now I'm gonna turn up my heat, it's been on low. Now we're gonna go all the way up and it's a little bit of a waiting game now. Slight intermission to go put the cows in. I just were informed that they are loose. Yeah. The tack room doors, I they got, they got through the tack room doors? I'm bad. Okay. Thankfully, these are the gentle ones, so they shouldn't be hard to get back in. Yeah, just the lower pasture. Open the gate to the lower pasture. We got them. So, see guys, canning is so easy, you can do it while you're moving cattle. Okay, back in the house, here we are. You can hear it hissing. We're building pressure. And if you can't really see it, but there is a stream of steam, hot steam coming out of my little pipe. So I'm gonna let that vent for 10 minutes. It's been 10 minutes, so I'm gonna stick my weight on. Again, your canner is gonna just be different depending on the brand. So it might look like mine, it might not, but that's how this one works. I put it for 15 pounds of pressure because I live at high elevation. Manufacturer directions have all the, the stuff for that. And now I'm gonna wait again until this starts to jiggle. And once it jiggles the first time, I'm gonna set my timer for 90 minutes because I'm processing quart jars. Okay, we've started jiggling. I don't want it jiggling constantly. I want it to jiggle a couple times every six, 60 seconds, but that's it. So I'm just gonna keep adjusting my burner to make sure that we're staying at the right level. If it jiggles too much, we're gonna be releasing too much steam and running our canner dry, which is bad. And if we don't jiggle enough, it means it's not at the proper pressure, but you can see my dial gauge here shows we're at 15 pounds, which is exactly what we need. So now I set my timer for 90 minutes and just shut the timer off. 
And now, this is important, I know you're excited to see the jars, but we're going to leave this alone. Don't touch anything until it gets back down to zero pounds of pressure. Otherwise it gets a little explosive and you don't want that. All right, it's the moment of truth. I'm down to zero pressure. It's safe to take the lid off now. So I'm gonna first remove the weight. Check it out, 100% sealing every time. And there you have it. This will last for years on the shelf. Our favorite way to eat it is just to pop it open and heat it on the stovetop with a little extra salt or we'll shred it up and put it in quesadillas or tacos. I'll turn it into different casseroles or stews. The possibilities are endless. It's the original convenience food. So I can't wait for you to try it. And don't forget to use code PURPOSE10 to save 10% off your order of four jars lid.